Happy Friday, beautiful souls. Happy Friday. In my country, we say Friday, which actually means a happy. On Fridays, we get to catch up with families to celebrate the gains that they've actually achieved. For some of our kids, they've actually managed to be able to be toilet trained at the age of 12. And they're no longer in their thieves. How amazing that. Finally, we could be beginning to work on your child's self-esteem and your child's uh, self-image. How amazing that is that. For some children, we're celebrating them sleeping in their own bed at the age of seven. How amazing is that. For some children, we're celebrating no seizures for the whole week. How amazing is that. For some of us, we're celebrating a child being able to wave goodbye. And for my son this week, we're celebrating him being able to say, excuse me, mommy, appropriately. Not just tapping and saying, excuse me, robotically, but saying, excuse me, mommy, can I have this? That's really amazing. For a child who was once upon a time non-verbal, that is huge. For some families today, you're probably celebrating that your child has passed the driving test. You're probably celebrating that your child has got a girlfriend. But in this community, we do understand the amount of work that has to go in, the amount of work that mommy has to do, the amount of work that the child has to do for them to be able to have these results. And did you know it takes about 37 steps for one to put food in their mouth and swallow it? 37 steps. So when we say a child has managed to eat a carrot and we want to blow that trumpet for, we are acknowledging that that child's brain had, has had to command 37 steps. For that to happen and that's why we make so much noise even for poo being type 4 we make so much noise because we know the hard work that is had to go in for that poo to come out as type 4 the child is had to adjust to a new form of diet probably take supplements before they put anything in their mouth, they've probably have had to take digestive enzymes. The child has had to tolerate certain food textures. Mom has had to cook from scratch and follow a food plan. Those things can never be taken lightly. So for all the beautiful moms that I have in my community, well done you. Really well done you. If there's nobody else that has told you well done this week, hear it from me. You're amazing. You're wonderful. You're incredible. And there is no one like you. And on behalf of your babies, thank you. Don't go yet. I want to tell you a beautiful testimonial this week. Four months ago, I took a, one, four, a, four, a four months ago, um, a nine-year-old came to me. He was already on ADHD drugs because of anxiety and hyperactivity. School was beginning to question placement. And mom was really, really getting tired. He had a lot of OCD tendencies. So his anxiety was actually expressing his OCD. So he was fixated on one subject. So, for example, he would fixate on CBB's land. Let's go to CBB's land. Let's go to CBB's land. And it, that would be the topic. In class, they want to do something else. He will just fixate on that subject. Just fixate on that subject. At home, they want to do anything else. He will just keep going. When are we going to fix it? CBB's land. CBB's land. Nothing else. Nothing else. It was practically like his brain was stuck in a particular loop. And we have managed, practically, mom has managed to pivot that. Focus his actually improved amazingly he's managed to actually he's he's easily redirected easily redirected to 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 to, to uh, you know activities and mom says to me and say it's like I've got a new child really it's like I've got a new child anxiety can ruin our children Really, it can. And it expresses in different forms. For some children, they line up things. For some children, they hand flap. 
For some children, they scream. For some children, they self-injure. For some children, they withdraw and they're constricted. For some children, like in this case, repetitive behaviors, repetitive behaviors. And it's also very distressing for the child. It means that they cannot learn anything else because the brain is stuck on this subject. So the whole world is on pause. So what did we do for this beautiful child? What did, what did we do that we've seen these amazing results? What did we do? We lowered his system and bucket. This actually meant that mom has to cook everything, every day, three meals every day for him. It also meant that mom needed to ensure that he doesn't eat anything that is processed. That's what he's given us. As far as I'm concerned, that was the biggest piece in the puzzle to allow us to pivot. Yes, we've put in supplements to support the GABA pathway. We've done that. Yes, we have reduced external stress. We've done that. But if we had done all these things and the histamine bucket continues to f overflow, we would not have seen the results. So when I say, well done to mummies, this is what I'm talking about. Just think about it. In this case, our beautiful young man, it means he can't eat grilled foods. It means they cannot eat takeaway. It means they cannot eat processed foods. It means, like in this case, because we were, he's so sensitive, this was a kid that was overflowing. The bucket was overflowing. All he can tolerate is casseroles at this moment in time. It has taken mom to change her mindset and to change a culture at home. And it has also taken the whole family to adjust themselves to this new way of eating. And the results are amazing. And because we are four weeks in now, mom is not stressed about it anymore. She was telling me that saying, oh, we, we, we carry this, we carry that for him. The bacon he used to be obsessed with, he's no longer obsessed with. That's why we celebrate our parents. When we say it's intensive, it, that's what we mean. But once you gain the momentum, once you gain, once you are in rhythm, everything becomes easy. Everything becomes easy. Once you gain the momentum, but how do you get momentum, Nansai? It's staying on course. Staying on course until you're automatically doing some of those things. Like, for example, in my case, we don't have to think anymore about how we have to do this, how we have to do that. I always say to parents, really, if you come and see, look at my fridge, it's practically empty. There's just vegetables in my fridge and frozen meats. That's what you will find in my fridge. And I promise you, that's what you will find. The results are amazing and they are worth it. And they are worth it. They are worth the struggle. My son showers on his own. He wakes up in the morning. He doesn't even have an alarm because his body has learned that rhythm. He wakes up in the morning, goes straight into the shower. How amazing is that? And today, one thing that I actually felt so good about was screaming for the first time. You know how it is when mother say, come down. I heard myself saying that to Jojo. What are you still doing? You need to come down. 
And I feel so good about it. But for some of you, it's the way of life. But for me, it's like... Because you don't want a robotic kid. You don't want a robotic kid. You don't want a robotic kid. Those are the things that happen in this community. It's beautiful to have a quiet house. It's really beautiful to have a calm house. It's really beautiful to have to sleep at night and not worry what what is happening with your kid, whether they're head banging or not. So for all the mummies that have rolled their sleeves this week, well done. And I'm proud of you. If you want to know about how we do it, how X does it, just follow the link below. We have two programs that run really. We've got the premium program, which is practically one-on-one, -on -one, six weeks intensive. And then we also have the workshops, which are four weeks intensive. We see the results across the board. For all the parents that apply themselves, we see the results. And um, we're proud of the mommies out there that are working hard. But don't forget to look after yourself. From my heart, cheers. Bye for now.